Hello, historians. This is Mr. Fredo. Uh, today's episode is focused on why the Reformation actually begins. The Reformation, again, is this big effort over a long period of time between 1300 and 1600 CE to, to excuse me, change the Catholic Church. So we want to know, essentially, why do so many people want to take on and challenge the Catholic Church to get it to change? Well, we have to go back in time a little bit. During the Middle Ages, like we've mentioned before, the Catholic Church gained a great deal of popularity and power. And that power uh, is concentrated in a, in a number of ways. There's legal power. They're actually, they actually have the ability to make some laws and enforce them. There's uh, financial power. Through a variety of factors, they become the most wealthy and rich organization in the world. Uh, and they also have power in terms of uh, kind of expectations and customs and culture throughout Western Europe. So if you remember what the Middle Ages was like, how long of a time period it was, over a long period of time, the Catholic Church and the people of Western Europe saw the power of the Catholic Church as an organization increase dramatically. Now, having power is not a problem. You can think of people all over the world in history, uh, and, and even today, people who have power who no one has a problem with because they view them as using that power for the right reasons. Many people throughout Western Europe, and certainly not all, but many people throughout Western Europe during that 1300 to 1600 year time, uh, 1300 to 1600 uh, era, the 300 year block of time, viewed the Catholic Church as using their power for the wrong reasons. Many people believe, whether they were a part of the church or outside of the church, very simply that the Catholic Church should be focused on religion. They shouldn't be focused on money or power or business or wealth or anything along those lines. They should be focused on religion. They should be focused on taking care of the poor, um, taking care of the people who in many cases can't take care of themselves. Many people thought that the Catholic Church should be focused on education because, again, the Catholic Church, certainly prior to the Gutenberg Press, they were the organization that had the ability to create books and actually possess most, most of the books in the world prior to 1450. So many people thought that they should be focused on teaching, especially religious uh, topics. And um, a lot of other people thought the Catholic Church should be focused on traveling and spreading the word of their religion as a way to gain more followers in an organic and in a safe and, and, and healthy way. What people become so upset about between, the, uh, between 1300 CE and 1600 CE is that many people throughout Western Europe view the Catholic Church as no longer worrying about religion and religious teachings and religious standards, but instead being focused only on wealth and the ways that they could gain wealth and the ways that they could use wealth to their own advantage as an institution. Remember, we're not talking about a single building here. We're talking about this organization that has reach all throughout Western Europe and beyond. One thing that people were really upset about was something called indulgences. Indulgences and you're looking at uh, a copy of one, indulgences were essentially a ticket or a piece of paper that if you paid money, this ticket said your sins are forgiven. Well, a lot of people are familiar with religious teachings, and they think, well, that's not the way it's supposed to work. According to church teachings, if you want to be forgiven of your sins, you have to pray, you have to do service, you have to do penance. And the Catholic Church instead is saying, if you pay money, we'll give you a ticket that says your sins are absolved. People don't like that. Another reason that people are upset is because the Catholic Church is practicing um, something called simony. Simony is when there's a job available in the Catholic Church, like the priest of a certain area or the cardinal of a certain area. And instead of giving it to the person who deserves it, the Catholic Church will instead give that to the person who will pay the most money for it. Now, that doesn't mean like your average Joe could go out um, and, and become the cardinal of uh, Geneva or the, or the cardinal of... Um, Rome, uh, this, this would be someone who was already involved with the church. But again, people thought that it, that it was wrong, that people should be earning those positions instead of, again, paying for them. And then lastly, a lot of people were upset because the Catholic, they believe the Catholic Church is enforcing very high, very frequent, unnecessary taxes, whether that was through tithing and paying 10% of your income, or whether that was through uh, taxes required for church services like baptisms or weddings things of that nature, some of the sacraments. So there are plenty of people in Western Europe who have this idea of what they think the Catholic Church should be focused on. 
and they begin to be upset because of what they perceive the Catholic Church to be only focused on, and that being wealth and money. That's really how it all begins. Our next steps in this unit are going to do, to really dig into and try to discover what people actually do to try to change the Catholic Church. You can't just sit back and say, I disagree. If you're going to be a protester, if you're going to be a real reformer, you actually have to do something about it. So the next episode and what we're really going to focus on is the people and what they did to try to challenge and change the Catholic Church to get it back to being focused on religion.